Globalism cannot work in global democracies. My name is Ben, this is the problem with being awake, I'll be your host. And the reason globalization is, is a bad thing for many Western countries, if not all, is it implies that our global partners will contribute equally to everything from funding NATO to funding um, the various NGOs of the UN through our tax money, where they're known to be very corrupt. The NGOs have been caught out being corrupt God knows how many hundreds of times. NATO is corrupt itself. There are lots of people who've made insider trading deals, which is when the, the military industrial complex, if they're about to sign off on a whole load of weapons to be developed. A lot of them buy sh stocks and shares in the weapons companies before the contract gets given to them, but they know the contract's coming and then they make a fortune. A lot of American politicians have done the same over quite a considerable amount of time. That's really what warmongering is. Dick Cheney made a lot of his money that way. Um, and it, it, it slaps in the face of national pride and patriotism. Globalism is a direct slap in the face to that. And let's just take climate change. If we take a globalised view of that, what do we do with India and China? Because no matter what the rest of the world does, if they don't drastically reduce their carbon emissions, nothing we do makes any difference at all, really. Uh, they're responsible for over 70% of what goes up and climate emissions have been coming down for 10 years. So no one tells people that. There's a great thing from Michael Schellenberger called Escaping the Woke Matrix and where he does tell real, real climate facts that are very encouraging, like there's more coral on the Great Barrier Reef than since ever before and everyone was saying it was going. You know, we there's the only reason there's poverty in Africa is because too many rich people in other underdeveloped nations and overdeveloped nations are holding on to the money that they could to actually bring power and women's liberation to Africa. Because women's liberation is a sign of any culture growing into um, something that can be democratic. Um, and the money's there to just help Africa get on their feet with power and LPG, liquid gas. Um, but yet, people aren't aren't giving it to them. Well, why? Because there's many geopolitical reasons why they want Africa to be poor. Now, this is globalisation for you. Big players that you don't know, that you certainly did not elect, making decisions about your money that you're probably not going to like. The whole idea of globalisation is, is kind of mixed in with the new idea of like socialism in many countries. America were trying it with the Democrat Party. They were trying to bring socialism and, so and Marxist concepts into law uh, in the last election, and they were rebuffed by the people. Why? Because of patriotism and national pride. Donald Trump's victory was a massive kick up the arse for the whole world. Unfortunately, we have a Labour government in England that has screwed us completely. They, in their manifesto for election, they lied, like totally. It's almost something out of a novel. As soon as they got elected, they went 180 degrees. They promised that they wouldn't do to farmers what they have now just done. And they promised it many times on recorded television. They promised not to put an inheritance tax on farmers. And now they've put such a tax on farmers that the majority of them will go bust having to sell their farms, which for some people have had them in, the in their generation for 300 years, as we spend £500 million developing farms in other countries when we should be supporting our own farming industry. The same goes with small business. The taxes now on small business or small to medium business make it impossible really for them to grow very, very much and make it very undesirable for any company to want to set up 
shop in England. They have passed ridiculous tax laws that are leaving everybody cold in winter because they can't afford their heating. Um, the, they are not looking after the elderly. They have literally backtracked on everything. And the Chancellor should be sat. She lied on her CV. She's lied about who she is. And she's come up with this horrible, detestable budget that could see Keir Starmer actually replace. Because if his popularity dips too much lower, there will have to be a reckoning on that. Because he lied to the British people about what he was going to do when he became Prime Minister. We're living what would have happened if Kamala Harris had become president. But Donald Trump's influence can't be um, flipped aside. In this whole war, war for globalization, he's turned the most powerful country in the world into a nationalized country where people are more patriotic, where biz small businesses get breaks. Um, fracking is now allowed. They're going to produce more energy than we've ever seen. And the UN have signified they want a preference to buy US oil. So that's before he's elected. They're already making that move. Um, and he's going to put, he can supply Europe for about, uh, from what he, he understands, about 180 years worth of supply of coal, not coal, sorry, uh, gas and, um, liquid petroleum and very rare minerals, the biggest untapped part, part of the world that has that is America. Alaska on its own is the biggest, but parts of other big parts of America, like Nebraska, have huge amounts of oil reserves underneath them. But Joe Biden put a stop to all that because of all the Green New Deals. Um, with global warming, all you need to know is safest way is nuclear. Let's get past the, st the stigma of nuclear bombs and a applying that stigma to very workable and very safe nuclear power stations, which we have now. Obviously, there's Chernobyl. There's a, there's a background there which makes nuclear sound difficult on our mouth, but it is our future because it's 20% the cost of any other type of renewable energy. Um, and, you know, it has very little waste uh, in comparison to what it used to. So, it is the way forward. And again, I would refer, refer you to that video. Uh, I'll put it, I'll put a link in there. Um, the woke, in the woke matrix was uh, escaping the woke matrix by Michael Schellenberger. He talks about all of this. The world is not nearly as, there's far much more demand for racism than there really is supply. But yet people are, are deliberately dividing by race and ethnicity and causing conflict. And in Europe, it's boiling over. Um, and in America, it boiled over. And huge amounts of immigrants have come in to the Western world and are not assimilating into it. They're not, And there are many bad actors now who are kind of rising the rabble. Now, I'd like to remind people that England have had Muslims living here for decades. And an Islamist is not a Muslim. An Islamist is a radicalised Muslim who reads the Hadith and believes that the meaning of all people need to be converted is to converted or killed. Whereas an, someone who reads the Quran, a normal Muslim, means it would be great if everyone got converted. It's that difference. And we have a lot of Islamists and they are being funded by our enemies to cause havoc in our societies and they're doing it brilliantly and they're winning and why because we're so focused on globalization on at the moment in britain the government is literally almost if it, if it gets the chance it will turn britain into a non a useless country we will have nothing to export. We won't have the food reserves to feed ourselves. We'll be entirely dependent on imports. No small business growth, really. Small group, lots of jobs lost. Uh, and it will destroy the country. And they've got to be stopped somehow because they've gone manic with this. And they don't apologise for the lies they've told. It's absurd. But it's happened in other countries in Europe. And, and people are going for this globalisation idea. But that would mean all countries are equal and play by the same rules. And they very much don't. And we are not part of the EU. And one of the reasons we were not part of the EU is we didn't want people in foreign countries making decisions we have to pay for. And that's simple. And that's true of a lot of European countries. And I think there will be an exodus from the EU when all of this is passed.
But for now, globalization is still being floated and it's one of the worst ideas in the world and it is ETH. The absolute kryptonite to a functioning individual, individually based nationalist pride. And I'm not saying like pride as in, you know, the far right type pride. I'm just saying that we actually still have national pride. There's plenty of us in the centre or centre right who have a lot of national pride in England and the British Empire, and we don't want it all eroded and all of our money flown away overseas. And we don't want the UN to be manipulating our money for goals that they have, not us, or the EU. We don't want to get back involved in being a trap. The whole point was so that we could coexist and get our own free trade deals. And rather than looking after the British people, cozying up to Donald Trump and looking to do the same thing in England, because he sent a message around the world that people don't want this. The far left started all of this progressiveness and people reject it. When you get to a fundamental level, much more people are conservative and rejective of progressive policies than there are people who are accepting them and pushing them. And that's got to change. So I'll leave it there. It's a really big problem we've got in Europe at the moment. And if left unchecked, it will destroy us. Um, you know, there's so many warnings. Like Douglas Murray wrote the book, The Strange Death of Europe. And in that, he played out what's actually happening now. And they even tried to investigate him because they think he might have instigated it because he was so accurate in his predictions. So when people hear things, share them, like talk about them, Try and get your head around the ideas and, and get, definitely get to know more about what's going on with your own governments because globalisation will not work, but it will destroy democracy if you let it or if I let it. So I'll leave it there. Always a pleasure, never a chore. I like making new videos and, frankly, uh, I want you to like them too, so please do leave in the comments anything you found useful, anything you think I should improve. Uh, you be lucky this week. I'll be good and I'll see you next time.